Welcome to the Hollywood scripting class. I'm glad to listen to several subsections so you don't have to sit in one place for too long. This first is a primer. Hollywood is a scripting engine and it is named after the city rather than being in it anyway, in any way related to it. It has a rich plug-in system that we will look, be exploring later in the presentation. At the end, we'll look at the Rapid GUI plugin and how to use it. The uh, language is the basis for Hollywood Designer, which won't be covered in this presentation because I don't own Designer. And I'm using dual screen support in my Linux box right now. Designer has, uh, many, has many of the features of PowerPoint, but it's mainly just a GUI front end for Hollywood. The preprocessor commands allow embedding and preloading of media files into the final presentation file, whether that is a Hollywood applet or an executable file. It is also the means to set the metadata used by the version command, for one thing. So selecting the proper locale support is also a feature of the preprocessor as is the plugin selection and importing additional source files for modularity. You can tell a preprocessor symbol in the code by its prefix of the at symbol. Hey Sam, um, we're, still, we're sitting on the first slide. Uh, were, you, oh. were, you, were the slides supposed to be switching as you go through? Or? Yeah, yeah they are. Um, Maybe uh, it's a different screen. <coughs> oh, I think I know how to fix that. Just hold on a second. Okay. Jitsi Meet is sharing a window rather than the screen, apparently. Yeah. Okay. So, I'll turn off the screen share and turn it back on. This time sharing the whole screen. Let's try that. No, what's the same? Oh, well, okay, so now we see the first screen. slide. Yeah, yeah. I'll try advancing it. Yeah. Oh, okay. there, we there we go. There we go. Okay. Right. <laughs> That'll work. Okay. I guess I won't read my notes for the past uh, oh, yeah. slides. Yeah, we can get okay, back there. on the track. All right. I, this is the one I just finished reading. Mm hmm Okay. Here's a simple text-based Hello World example. Notice how the version preprocessor directive limits Hollywood compilers having less than version 2.0 for compiling it. Nice and simple. Cool. Okay, next one. There are six primitive data types in Hollywood. Integer, whole numbers, floating point, which allow fractional parts as decimal, and are stored in scientific notation. Strings are buffers to hold Unicode or ISO Latin text. Tables, which store multiple items like namespaces, arrays, classes, and maps are all rolled into one entity. Functions are also a data type that st stores Hollywood bytecode. Finally, the nil type is no type at all, but is mainly a placeholder. It is assigned to variables to cause them to be garbage collected. Do, do the tables have to be a fixed size, or can they be variably sized while the They're program? variable size. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a few slides. Hmm. While variables are not fixed to a simple, single type their entire lifetime, it's recommended to keep them that way as such. I haven't followed the Hollywood style guide in this example because each, of my, each use of my var is assigned to a different type. Normally, a floating point variable was delimited with an exclamation point, while a string would end with a dollar sign. Notice in the last example that multiple assignments and return values can be returned and combined. And though I didn't show it here, functions can have multiple return values, and the receiving variables are comma separated as displayed here. Okay, that's the basic variables. Local and global scope is next. Okay, variables have local or global scope 
and global is the default. They are visible anywhere in the script, but that isn't always an advantage. Locals are garbage collected after their use count reaches zero, usually at the end of the function. This means they don't sit around after their usefulness is gone. Simula simulating other scopes like class vis visibility is accomplished using the table data structure as men mentioned later on. Constants, other than the Boolean type, true and false, start with the pound symbol, or hash symbol, eh, whatever, <laughs> and are assigned once using the const command or passed in by a command line parameter option. They are evaluated before the program starts running and are often used to give more runtime speed. They cannot go out of scope, so they are always global. Table is the only type in Hollywood that can store other types. For each key in the table, there is a value. Stored values can be any type recognized by Hollywood, including other tables. Only the integer type or string type can be used as keys, but floating point has rounding problems, and tables also cannot be keys to other tables. We got a question here. Yeah. There's one one general okay. question. Is, is Hollywood an interpretive language or a compiled language, or it could be either? It compiles to a bytecode and then interprets the bytecode. So okay. it's both. Both, okay. Okay. And, and, and go ahead and pipe up with questions, or I can't see the, the YouTube stuff right now because of the delay. I was going to look that out on that on my phone just in case there were comments from there, too. So you might have to holler if somebody says something there. Okay. Okay. I'll only make a brief mention of meta methods for the table data type. It allows math functions and other operators to be defined for specific tables having the same meta table, such as making a table into a function look alike. Avoid using it if possible because it makes code look confusing. It can be bypassed using the raw get, raw set, and raw equal so that the table characteristics are always accessible either from within a meta method or bypassing them. It's, it's kind of like, yeah, like it says on the slide, operator overloading. Classes are used to contain data and optionally functions. When functions are stored uh, associated data that's called object-oriented programming. There is an additional slideshow on how to use tables for object-oriented programming later on. Arrays are wrappers for tables in Hollywood, so there's no speed advantage over any other table usage, but there are special support functions for them, including the list subtype that stores a hidden length member in the metadata as of version 9.0. Namespaces are containers for classes, but they're essentially just another container like any other. Based on the table, all of these. Conditionals come in two flavors in Hollywood. If statements and switch statements. The if, else, and if statement is a Boolean version of the switch statement in that the statement passed in must evaluate to zero for false and non-zero for true. Switch statements have both multiple case statements for either integer or string values. The values tested against in the string switch statement must be constants. There are four types of looping constructs in Hollywood. While when is a pretest loop and repeats as long as the conditional expression is met. The repeat until construct is a post test construct and repeats if the conditional expression is not met. And I'll continue this on the next slide. The counted for loop is for numeric units and can have an optional step value that would otherwise <laughs> default to one. The general for loop is used with an iterator function to iterate over tables, mostly. I didn't write it in my notes, but there's also a string iterator that uses a regex as its key thing. 
I pairs, iterates in a numeric order over arrays or tables with integer keys, while the pairs take inter uh, excuse me, the pairs iterator generates a non-repeating, unsorted order of all keys in a table, regardless of the type of the keys. Functions group commands together. In Hollywood, they can be stored in variables like any other constant data type or stored as table members. Methods in Hollywood are implemented as a shorthand for the passing the table containing it as the self parameter in the function. It's an object-oriented version of the function type, indicated using the colon notation rather than the dot notation. And of course, what, once we cover object-oriented programming in the second slideshow, that will become readily apparent. The return state exits the function immediately with an optional one or more parameters. In Hollywood, returned parameters must be contained in parentheses. Local values can be passed back because when they are assigned to the local, the, when they are assigned to the return code, the reference count is increased before the local variable goes out of scope, avoiding the use after free condition. There are other flow, command, flow control commands like the continue command, which restarts the cur current iteration of the loop from inside the loop construct. Break exits a loop or conditional. Note that switch statements normally do not need a break statement to exit after a case statement, but use the fall through command to indicate the next case needs to be evaluated without ending the statement. Fall through can also be specified at the end of the first line of a switch to give a C style fall through by default characteristic, making break statements necessary once again, if desired. Here's a more advanced hello world example that uses the requester library function system request. It pops it up and waits until you hit the OK button. It would have worked in Hollywood 2.0 if he, we hadn't specified the REQ icon information constant. There are many libraries of routines built into Hollywood as well as plugins that add to them. The video codecs supported by Hollywood can vary from operating system to operating system, as can any format, but there are built-in codecs in Hollywood itself and its player. There are plugins that add to the number and type of supported formats as well. As you can see from this slide, there are quite a number of media format types supported. There are an, also an expansive list of capabilities contained in the libraries as well. Locale support defaults to Unicode UTF-8, unless specified otherwise, for example. The operating system support libraries are also quite extensive. AREX ports and calls are here, as well as docky support and public screens. The mobile OSs include on-screen keyboard support, as is needed. Even Windows registry and shortcut icons can be used. So, shortcut icons, did I say? Oh, well. Hmm. I've got another, here's another slide full of available plugins I just pulled off of their website. Music playback formats, graphics loaders, archivers. Um, and here's a few more plugins, video playback, networking, animation, and it can even import files from Scala Multimedia and display them on a graphics card using Hollywood. And rounding out, there's graphics acceleration APIs, OpenGL, SDL2, the like. These links should work with clip from the PDF version of the slideshow I've uploaded on GitHub. Or if they don't, the, eh, it's 
It's just the appended to the Hollywood-mal.com for the documentation. No. So that's the end of this slideshow. Are there any other questions so far? Okay, any questions? I have a question. Uh, you mentioned earlier importers the XML, right, and the scanner. Yes. Uh, I'd like to ask you about the XML. What's the what's the reason to import that? How you can use it? It's actually a plugin. Uh, yeah, you download the plugin from the Hollywood uh, website, and it actually imports XML into tables. For data uh, manipulation. For data, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. In fact, it's uh, as as, I, as I'll cover in the next slideshow. There's a uh, serialization uh, commands in Hollywood to just slurp in data from other formats, including JSON, and then there's a plugin for XML and a couple of other. Mm. Well, not a couple of others, but anyway. Does this have plugins to do things with um, SOAP or REST services? No, not. Uh, I think the only networking plugins are there's Curl, which is a, a Hollywood version of Curl. So you can okay. actually do that manually for REST services. Okay. And then the <laughs> other one is the HTTP streamer that lets you stream video through Hollywood. Thank you. Okay, are there any more questions? Um, uh, looks like everyone here is happy. Um, let me check right. the uh, YouTube. They're a, they're a little bit behind us, as you've split, seen, but I, I don't yeah, see anything in the chat. Right. So, yeah, okay. let's keep going. Okay, I got another slideshow. I'll exit this one and pull up the next. stretch, now is a good time. I, I've kind of breezing through these a lot quicker than I thought I would. This has only took, taken about, what, 15, 20 minutes for the first slideshow? Yeah. So that wasn't too bad. No, that was an intro okay. stuff. Everyone yeah. here is like just eating it up, like through a fire hose. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. The, the, I, this next one is the intermediate level object-oriented Hollywood techniques, and it's focuses almost exclusively on tables. Because, and I'll be fo focusing on aspects of tables that are not covered very much in the, uh, in the manual either. So I think this will be a good addition to the, to the presentation. Sounds good. Ready to go? Okay. Yeah. Here we go. There are five main uses of tables in Hollywood. The map usage, also known as hashing, is how tables are implemented internally. Arrays are presently only implemented in tables as well, but that may change in future versions of Hollywood. Classes are the basis of object-oriented programming. Namespaces are a side effect of usage of tables. Finally, there are serialization methods built into Hollywood that allow tables to act as file buffers. Hash tables associate keys with values. The keys can be integers or strings. Keys must be unique, but values can be stored in more than once in a table. Writing to a key already in use will overwrite the contents. Values can be any type. Tables stored in other tables are a common occurrence, as you will see in later slides. Tables in Python are called dictionaries, and in C++ they are called unordered maps. They are the preferred means of associating strings with that. Here's an example of a table used in an array constant 
as an array constant. It has all of the major types stored in it, including a nested table. Note that all uninitialized table indexes are evaluated as a nil type, and the first index is always zero. As long as the keys are unique in the underlying table construct, the inner tables are allowed to be any length and are not really multidimensional. Memory slab arrays, uh, memory slab style array literals may be coming in a future version of Hollywood. It can be improvised in the memory block library functions, but not serializable to and from variables yet. As a side note, the memory block library routines can convert table arrays to memory blocks and back again through though and support endian conversions. Of course, as uh, mentioning endians, the Hollywood language is primarily big endian and defaults to that storage for most of its data structures, unless specified otherwise here as here. Since functions can be stored in variables in Hollywood, it should come as no surprise that tables can also store functions. Storing functions with the data they associate with is called object-oriented encapsulation in the classes. The main difference between methods and functions is the reference to self, which is the table in which the method is stored. Here's an example of a class. Can you spot the error? In the next slide, we'll cover it. It's right here. OK. <laughs> Static functions cannot re reference the self table because it's not passed in as the first parameter. So here we go. Here's the fix, right here. It, using that colon converts the function to a method so that it will always have the implicit self as the first parameter. Here's another class. It only works if x is a primitive type, though. I wasn't quite following that self. Is that kind of like the this in JavaScript? Yeah, uh, yeah, and in C++ as well, yes. Okay, okay. All right, thank you. Sure. Can you figure out why this is a bug? Because the x is not a primitive? Yes, it's a table. So it, get, it, so it aliases to the y variable and it just has a use count of two. So you can't assign y a value without it also going to x. That's why you get a one here. But well, well spotted. Here's the best solution. Copy table. It by default does a deep copy, but if you pass false as the second parameter, it'll do a shallow copy for you just as easily. One of the most important characteristics about object-oriented programming is called polymorphism. In this case, the def variable is initialized to the default values of the B class. The new function, called the constructor, could also be, have been initialized, have initialized them as well. Any mixture of the default values and initialization parameters will do. So, yeah, let's see. Yeah, there it is. There's the parent. There's the constructor, and it just copies the table and returns it. The show method of class C doesn't have anything to show, except the string, nothing to show. Okay. Straightforward. Array D contains the two classes B and C from the previous two slides. Since they each have a show method, the for each functions can, can I use for each or for each i? I use for each i. 
for each i function can call them each. Note that the way that x is declared as a local and is garbage collected when the n function has occurred. Note also that the i pairs iterator and unnamed function definition is passed into the for each fun for each i function as parameters. This is called dependency injection in JavaScript and other scripting languages as well. This is all the for each i. This is where for each i ends. It just passes the function in as a parameter. That's what I was describing. Notice here that the generalized for in construct is simpler than the for each i function. But the value of variable x doesn't get garbage collected until the new value is assigned into it. And that the last font value of x bleeds across into the remaining code in, in the function unless you manually assign it to nil. Here's another way of doing the same thing, but it's not quite as clear as just using the for each i function. The block construct does contain the scope of the local variables x and y, however. Just another way of doing the same thing. The write table and read table commands serialize tables to disk, including everything in them. When serializing and deserializing, there are several gotchas involved. They will be addressed in the last few slides of this presentation. Here's a global function that will remove all functions from a table, including all nested tables. Uh, pretty straightforward. It's recursive, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> I've listed a few reasons here telling why you don't want to just leave the function definitions inside the data file. The chief one is that careful, a carefully crafted bytecode written by another Hollywood programmer could perform hostile actions on the computer loading the file. Other ones, including bugs existing in long past their original corrective action. Finally, the bytecode takes up memory and disk space anyway. The moral of the story, don't be lazy. Clear the bytecodes when you don't want them saved. For relinking in the methods in a table when reloading, the program needs to know what type of class the methods belong to. Adding a class key with a string attached is useful when there are so many nested tables that offsets won't be known from the beginning of the file. Adding a header and format version to the front of a file makes it easy to know the file type, so it's also a useful technique. In the next couple of slides, I'm going to describe how case-sensitive keys can make things run amok. Here's a couple examples of syntax that converts to lowercase keys. Because the function call name converts to lowercase also, it's required that you do the same when assigning methods back to their table keys. Always lowercase here, even though it's even though it's typed in camel case, these two become lowercase. Here it is. I guess I was expecting the next slide. Here it is. Since the function calls are required to be lowercase, assigning them back to their key names needs to be done properly. The first one is a lowercase pointer function pointer. Uh, did I say pointer? Lowercase function, but not a method because it doesn't pass the self parameter like the third one. The second tries to use a colon notation on a variable name which doesn't work. The fourth one could work if the string in square braces were lowercase. Finally, raw set is the most reliable way since it bypasses meta methods. This only works because it's already lowercase, though. Same here. I ran into that one in the object-oriented uh, programming example that I'm going to show later on. The built-in serializer is the default and is binary for backward compatibility. Small size, 
small file size and speed. JSON is called the default serializer even though it isn't the default option, but it's useful because it can be viewed and edited from a text editor. There's a plugin for XML reading also that interfaces with the Hollywood deserializer. Other plugins offer compression and encryption as an option as well. The seventh inning stretch. <laughs> We've completed the object oriented session of the program <laughs> section of the Hollywood programming session. The next section refers to source code at this link. However, I will be having examples built into the slideshow in case you don't have the downloaded. Okay, I breezed through that in 14 minutes. Less than 14 minutes. Okay. Here we go. Looks like I might get this done in less than an hour. So with, with that capitalization um, that you're going over there at the end of the functions, do you tend to yes. just, just make all your functions lowercase to avoid Issues? Uh, actually, uh, actually, they're converted to lowercase. It's only if you try to load them back in from a file, uh, or load back the table in from a file, and then add them back in, that oh, becomes okay. a problem. Oh, I see. I see. I didn't catch that here once. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. That's important. No, because I, uh, <coughs> I use camel case for my very, for my function names. Okay. All usually, right. but uh, that doesn't get stored. Okay. Yeah, that was a very subtle bug that I ran across in Rapid Edit. All right. All right. Well, welcome to the third session. We'll cover making Hollywood applications using the Rapid GUI plugin by going through the source code of the Rapid Edit GUI Builder application sources on GitHub. Oh, I, I should have asked if there were any more questions on the previous slideshow. Any questions? Okay, hearing none. I'm or, not hearing. I don't see any on YouTube either. Okay. Right. So we'll go on. Here we go. To give a little background of Rapid GUI, it's the cross-platform GUI plugin for Hollywood. It's based on MUI on the Amiga Linux and WX widgets on the mainstream OSs. It's got a cut-down mobile version for Android, but iOS requires its own proprietary cheap. GUI file format used by Apple's own GUI build. The Rapa Edit GUI builder I wrote for Rapa GUI was written to demonstrate advanced object oriented techniques on Hollywood. Its modularity helps programmers work independently on different parts of the code. Since it's under Apache, the Apache 2.0 license, anyone is welcome to join in the development team. Ah, in, in, plug, plug. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's start by going through rapaedit.xml file that contains the skeleton of rapaedit's own GUI. The ID subtags on each item, like uh, here and here and all of these, are used by the event handler and elsewhere in Rapid GUI. I put MN on IDs on every menu item so I can use a text filter to process items separately. This will make the event handler more modular as we'll see later on. The empty menu items represent uh, horizontal lines in the menu just to keep things organized. And, and yes, those lines do appear as dividing lines in the menu. The toolbar buttons are defined similarly but have icons assigned to them in the internal brushes loaded in by the Hollywood preprocessor directives in the script. The window has a notification called close request that allows us to put a warning requester when exiting the program. Otherwise, it would exit as soon as you hit the exit gadget without any warning, warning or checks for unsaved data. It's right here. H splitter is a frame gadget 
just introduced in the most recent version of Rapagui. It allows resizable frames to be used. V group stacks items contained in it vertically as is common to most resizable GUIs. The list view and buttons are pretty straightforward. Also, notice though that they each have prefixes before the underscore also. TB here, tree for the tree gadget, select B selection, window add. So in this example right now we have a list view and the buttons vertically aligned uh, underneath the list view? Yes. Okay. In fact, I'll, I'll be pulling up, uh, in two slides there will be a, a screenshot that will show exactly how okay. it looks. And uh, if you want to have a shortcut or something like that? Oh yeah, that's possible. Yeah. Definitely do. In, okay. Uh, the tree view has a similar definition to the list view of the previous frame. But more methods are defined for tree view gadgets than list view gadgets. All the close tags just wrap up the XML. <clears throat> the editor generates all this stuff for other programs, but it does it graphically. And it's what looks like this. Mm -hmm. Here's the list view and all the buttons under it. And there's the toolbar, all the menu to menus. I didn't show you the definition of all, only the file menu, but uh, Next slide will be event handling. All right, here we go. Now let's cover the event handling. As mentioned earlier, the ID subtags identify the, the gadgets and XML is case sensitive. Event types are dependent on the gadget type. The message data items are parameters passed within the event messages. In all the Rapagui example programs, a switch statement was used, but using table lookups is more modular and allows the different classes to have their own event handlers by encoding their messages with a prefix. Here's an abbreviated form of the global event handler from the main script in rapaedit.hws. It only has some debugging information removed. The only switch statement filters out messages that aren't generated by rapid GUI widgets, which is the only kind that are used so far in this program. The prefixes table accessed by the rocket command holds the prefixes and handlers for each class. Finster is probably a, as, as central as the raw get. It finds where the where the underscore is, and this clips off everything up to the underscore as a prefix. Pretty straightforward so far. Show me the source. Here it comes. That's the end of the slideshow, by the way. I'll be pulling up. Uh, VS Code or whatever it's. All right. Now I'll just, uh, this should look familiar. It's the XML program file that we just went through. And here's, it shows the shortcuts. It's are you just able, a sub sorry, are you able to bump the font up a couple of points? It's I'll see that. I'll see if I can. Um, this is running. <clears throat> no. Edit. Isn't it just a zoom in the in the uh, oh, zoom zoom in the browser? You know, no, this is not in the browser. No. This is actually the the uh, code OSS um, editor. It's a VS Code spin-off. Let's see, view, ah, appearance, that should do it. No, there, 
There it is. Zoom in. How's that? A little better? I'll do it again. Oh, yeah. that was good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was a little bit of a delay. So. Okay. That was a lag. Yeah, there is a little lag. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I have it set to only update the video frames like uh, five frames per second. Six, maybe. So, yeah, it's about a tenth of a second lag. But uh, I didn't show the gadget menu, but it does have a shortcut mm -hmm. for each. And then the underscore in these is, a short, is, is in itself a sh another shortcut way of designating that in the, in the case of new, write Amiga N will start a new document. Hmm. But uh, that's not really what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you more of the code. Okay. It uses the latest version of both Rapagui also. And all of these icons are just uh, PNG files, as you can see, and they load with the transparency set. This uh, here is a table showing uh, non-array elements. It's, it's the load output is a key, and true is the value. I didn't show that syntax in the earlier slideshow. I probably should have. And then it includes a bunch of other classes. And I'll show you their layout in a bit. These uh, tables here are used to for the the gadget classes table is used to do the uh, event handling. So each of these has separate event handling uh, sections in it. A lot of these are just global uh, functions. Okay, we can skip through some of these. Preview handler is one of the message handlers, and it just oh close oh it's for, this is when the preview handler actually ends the preview. No handling. Let's see. Most of this. Okay, here's the menu at toolbar handling. It just passes the message and len length of the prefix into it. I probably should have just passed the the actual mess the part of the message ID without the length as being a parameter. So I wouldn't have to do this left stir, but it's, you know, work in progress. Ah, this is the one that I was looking for. It only has a few debugging things in it that weren't in. Oh, this isn't even the one I was thinking it was. Oh, well. But, uh, hmm. Hmm. I've got a bunch of different event handlers, as you, as you can see. Now, here's the global one that we saw earlier. A couple of asserts that were added, but not really anything that I didn't show you before. Initialization. Read string one. That is the first preprocessor definition. It just imports the XML file. And that passes it into MOAI as the prefix for the plugin, the, the M, not MOAI Royale, the RapidGUI plugin. Everything plugin based has its own table that it's a member of. That's an example of the namespace use of the table that I mentioned earlier. And then that's it. Here's the global prefixes being assigned to different event handlers. And uh, that's it for the, it's only about a little over 500 lines of code in the main file. The reason I can do so much with so little code is because most of the code is not in the main file. It's in the gadget files. 
Here's the button class. Let's see how long it is. About half the length of the main file right there. This adds back all the method names after loading back in uh, the button from a saved document and this kills all the the uh, but the not only the not only the methods but also any uh, table references that would be circular because that would cause an infinite loop in the serializer. I forgot to mention that earlier. That also has to be done. No, no cycles can be allowed in the serializer. But uh, just a couple of methods here. Generating XML and previewing does almost exactly the same thing. Except it doesn't indent since the preview doesn't show the code. Maybe I should just show you the running program. That's fun. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll pull that up. Here it is. It's got. It's still got quite numerous bugs in it, but I can show you a few things. Start a new application data and. By editing, we see that it's got the UTF-8. I can rename this. Nor app. And it does it all graphically. I, didn't, I don't have all the tags supported for every item. Uh, one thing that, that I might have to do in the future is to make the applications a separate tab for each document. Presently, I've just got multiple applications stored in the tree view. That's not quite so intuitive, but it works. Added a window. Eight hundred by six hundred window. These tags get stored in the file, but they don't actually do anything in the preview yet. I made a note of that in the in the, uh, anyway, in the issue tracker on GitHub. Vertical group, let's edit that. And make it horizontal. Custom color, also does not happen, but there's shows the color checker on Linux. So it'll be a it doesn't actually affect the preview there either. I, I need to add that support later on. Now a rectangle is just a space and the horizontal group, let's add a radio gadget. Oops, one too many. And another rectangle. Now let's preview it. Oh, it's empty. Okay, so it's just a rectangle. That's not interesting. Let's edit the radio gadget. One. Let's see if this works. Um, preview, and there you go. You got a radio gadget. Let me choose one or two. This exit preview button was added by the by the editor script. That won't be in the final version, but uh, this will let us exit the preview. You can do groups inside of groups, as I mentioned earlier, so let's try that. Put a couple buttons in there, double-clicking on the 
list view. I've got that set to automatically add. Okay, let's preview it again. Here we go. The rectangle is between the yes and no buttons, and they're stacked vertically like the B group says. I'm essentially just killing time here, but uh, there's one of it. So I'm just wondering, now, now, now I mean, can you save this out as a Hollywood code thing? I mean, is this... This whole thing was written in Hollywood. Yeah, but, but let's say... Just take, the plug-in wasn't. Yeah, let's say I want to take this, this, this GUI that we're taking right now, are we making, I want to add some additional code to that. How would I do that? Okay, that, yeah, you'll need to... This just generates the XML portion XML. of the wrapper GUI function. Okay. Then so, you, have to, you have to add that to a source I'll show you file. That. I'll show you that. I'll show you that. Export script as there. It shows you the XML oh, that will generate. XML, okay. Will be one of these ID names have connected to it. So, in a in a switch statement or a table, you'll have a function that would pop up a requester, a system request, I believe, is the command to do that hello world, like I showed in the first slideshow. And that would be it. That would be all that would actually so, be needed. I, okay. So, I, I'm just wondering, I mean, how much work is it to do that? I mean, once you have this, let's say you built, started building this application and wrap a GUI, you know. Um, yeah. You know, how? Um, okay. Can, I'll, can you do that? Okay. I'll, I, I, I can actually pull up an example program from the wrap a GUI uh, that came with the wrap a GUI um, plugin. And it'll show you, and I'll show you what a more typical case of what a. In fact, I'll even save. This as test four, so we can go back to it later, and that's pretty much working. This. Okay. No, it didn't. Stack overflow. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, the radio gadget I think has some uh, bugs in it still. But anyway, um, let's see. Oh yes. Um, that's a good one. By the way. This is a menu that comes with Hollywood itself. It has a nice menuing thing. It, you can pull up the web page very quickly and easily. It's got shortcuts to everything there. And this is handy because not every, not every uh, uh, integrated de development inter IDE environment has uh, the ability to run a program. So I have all my projects here in this so I can just display them. So I'm, this time I'm going to be going to wrap. See dialog boxes. And we'll show the source code first. While we're talking a little bit about Hollywood Night at a high level, I was looking at the website um, before okay. the session. And it looks to me like when you when you buy Hollywood, um, you can use that license on multiple platforms. It, it looks like yes, it's a, it's not a per seat license; it's a per person license. Right. So yeah, if you've got a Windows machine, I I've, I've got it installed on my Linux machine, my MorphOS machine, my OS four box, and that's perfectly legal to do. In fact, it's kind of expected since you want to test it. 
on each of the platforms you support. So, yeah. yes, you're right. That is a thing for Hollywood. Uh, and my next kind of high-level question is, is um, with, since it's you know since it targets you know all these platforms, in your experience, um, is that a fairly seamless process targeting the different platforms, or do you run fairly. into the gotchas? There, uh, there's a few bugs that run that pop up within Hollywood itself, and that's actually kind of the weak spot of. Hollywood is that Andreas Falkenhahn is basically the only guy programmer making Hollywood. So it, it, you might have to wait till the next version once you found a bug. Yeah. That's kind of a weak spot. Let's see, here's the, okay, here's the event function for this dialogues. The pick point nine. First it switches the, the action which identifies Rapagui as one of the types. Attribute, active, th these um, are for different actions for the, for the um, different uh, me menu items and so forth. MN is menus. And then here's another, it's got about three layers of case statements here. For pressed buttons, each one has its own code there. And then that's it. I prefer to divide it out so that uh, you can make some of these inner levels of case statements into a separate function and just pass the ID in as a parameter. But. Uh, for a smaller function. But let's go ahead and pop up and show how this works. Okay, Hollywood. Oops, it's on the wrong screen. There it is. And it's uh, just a, this dialogue, I think it's just a simple database example. It's fairly short and to the point code once you look through it. Little plug. There you go. And this is just a very nice little short example. Um, actually, I should uh, pull up the directory and it's in so you can see if it's all the files. Usually on the examples, uh, Andreas has just done a file to string command on an external XML file. So let's let's quit out of this. Doesn't save. But uh, dialogues. I'll pull that. So there's the Hollywood script. It's not actually C source code. I don't know why it says that. Um, then there's three XML files, and the rest is here is only used by the menu. 
that's the preview, the INI file tells the parameters to pass, and this is, no, this is the preview. No, they're both previews, it's just one of them is twice as big. Anyway, this, this is all there was to that little program that had us graphically editing a, a little address book. I guess I could just pull up. Okay, here's the main. Oh, nice and short. Just the main screen here. And. And the address editor. Also nice and short. <coughs> so, I, let's see. Oh, there was one more thing I wanted to show you on this one. The, the rapid edit editor. This one didn't work right. It's a 2.5 megabyte file. And it didn't close properly. I should delete it. But here's test two wrap up. Here's a. It doesn't have. Yes, it does have a radio. So how did I get that to work? Anyway, <laughs> that's one thing I was kind of debugging the other day, a day or so ago, when I was trying to test it out. But. Uh, has a two buttons, a dialogue. Let's, let's preview the dialogue. Two buttons yeah. and a radio. Makes the preview. And the window is a separate preview. Just two buttons. Okay. Oh, another thing. There's a utility I put into the Rapa Edit. Uh, to a submenu in the Rapa edit that lets me view the file's contents. It just uses the built-in serializer. Oops, let's run this on the wrong screen. There we go. And this is the file format right here. It just has a text item and a version number as a header. And then these are just the tables held in it. Note that tables are not ordered. But uh, that was the, let's, let's just show a file dump of the, okay, let's try that again. Only this time we'll show the one we just had. That was wrap of three. And here's the contents of it. Handy little debugging tool to be able to make something like this. And it's a very brief command. All it does is deserialize it into a tree view gadget. They say they analyze the XML file, right? This can be generated as XML, yes. No, I mean, it, is, uh, it takes the XML file and that. Uh, uh, no. It's the, the, list, uh, the list view, right? It actually, the, the save game, or the, the, the save option is stored as a binary serialization mm. format. <coughs> I could have used JSON, but I, did, I started this on a much older version of Hollywood that didn't have the JSON serializer yet. Ah. So, I just, so I'm just using the built-in serializer. Here's all the parameters of every item that went into the file. In fact, I can even show you the source code of this easily. Just a few functions, and there it is. Ah, okay. Yeah. This 
<clears throat> okay. That's the file loader. Let's see, I don't think I... Oh, here's something I did a little different from the other one. I embedded the XML for the GUI right into the source code of the Hollywood script itself. This double square brace here indicates a multi-line quote. So I was able to pass this in as a multi-line string right into the create app. I didn't do that in the other one. I kept the XML outside. But didn't And then, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Okay, yeah, read file. Open file, creates a table and reads a string from the file for the an eight character cookie that's wrap a edit. And it reads the integer from the file, which is the version number. And then it just reads in the whole table and closes the file. That's all there is to it. it. It's all serialized by Hollywood. All right. So, so when you problem. say read table uh, from the file, uh, reads the whole file, right? That uh, yeah, that was the whole program there. I was one. I didn't even have an external file in it because I was able to embed the XML. So that was a nice small little utility. Cool. All right, and uh, rectangle. This has all of the methods associated with it. And uh, some, here, okay, you wanted a function that could generate uh, Requester, here's the wrap a GUI requester. Map a GUI request, it's an error, and you cannot remove a gadget from a rectangle because there is no rectangle, because a rectangle can't hold any gadgets. So it, there's an error message right there from easy requester. One line of code, nice and easy. I wish C++ could be made so easy. Mm -hmm. Maybe it can. That's a request that comes from the system, right? This one, yeah, the MOAI is uh, Rapagui itself, and the request is a requester portion of it. So that makes things a lot nice and easy. There any more questions? Anything, any requests that you'd like to see other parts of the program? Uh, we have a couple in the chat. Okay. Um, the first one was, uh, and I think this would be an, you know, in your opinion type of a question. Um, okay. How, how easy or hard do you think it is to jump into Hollywood programming for someone with no programming experience? It's very easy with no programming experience. This is just how far I've been able to push it after years of experience, but uh, you can actually do a lot of really simple stuff with it not right out of the box. It's got a very good manual. It's got a very extensive library of routines built in to its libraries. And uh, yeah, uh, here, let me kill this, and then we'll just look at Hollywood's help. But it has a lot of uh, examples over there that cover a lot of uh, yes. scenarios. So someone can grab uh, an example and uh, experiment with that. Yes, yes, yes. And here's uh, the documentation on all of the the entire plugin of Rapagui. It's got a lot of extensive information here. And that was a pretty trivial one. The, this one is kind of optional, the HTML view class. On MUI, it uh, has a HTML view class that's basically HTML version 3.0, and it's
it's not even worth using in my opinion anymore just because it's HTML3 and not even complete for that. It was an offline HTML viewer. And likewise, you can leave it out of the Linux version in case you're missing something. Okay, but uh, you can see here there's quite a bit of uh, documentation. I kind of had it over. I kind of hit on the second question that the same okay. same person had about um, you know books or tutorials available online um, outside of what okay. uh, outside of what we see in Hollywood here, which looks quite extensive. Um, yeah, specifically with, well, most with OS four, or it doesn't even well, matter what, what operating system. Except for the system class, that that everything is common to all of the versions. Okay. Except for the system class, I'll I'll pull a hat, I'll pull up. Let's see where's it? here. I'll, I'll pull up the main help file. Okay. System class. Okay. This is basically, I think all the system specific stuff there for, oh, no it isn't, uh, it would be, where is it? Okay, here's the Amiga support library. Here's the Amiga specific stuff. Amidoc, uh, Amiga, open and close Amiga guide documents, AREX, List of registered applications, pub screens, front screen. This is all the Amiga specific stuff in there. Everything else, let's see, I think there's a mobile. Yeah, here's for Android and iOS. And let's see, there's a Windows support library here. Everything else is common to all the versions. They all run the same graphics chips somewhere, like a Radeon card, what have you. They all have a processor, they all have a certain amount of memory. It's all common pretty much to all of them. And you um do you primarily go to the to the docs here in the in the product, or is there any third party site okay. that you go to for for um, info on Hollywood? Let's see. Oops. This is the stage I wanted. I I have a few links on my GitHub repository. Okay, here's the crash course in Hollywood. It's of course part of Morph Morph Zone, but it's okay. kind of a brief tutorial that gets you started at, at least. And it has a little bit more depth on how you can get started. Let's see, I think this is on Cubic IDE. Yes, Cubic IDE. When, on my MorphOS box, I use uh, Flow Studio, which comes with MorphOS uh, SDK nowadays. But this, I think, is a little bit before that came out. So this is on Cubic. Uh, this is, there aren't a lot of tutorials based on, yeah, this is about the only one I know of actually, <coughs> that are not from the, the documentation that comes with Hollywood. But uh, the, the, the Hollywood documentation is public, it's all on its website. It does really well. There doesn't really need to be that many uh, tutorials about it because the documentation that comes with it is so good. Oops. And then the last question, I'm getting them all here, was um, what you're developing in Hollywood. So the, okay. the, the Rapa, Rapa GUI edit, that's Rapa, all you, right? Yeah, Rapa edit, that's me. That's all you? Rapa, that's all me, Rapa edit. 
Yeah. Uh, it's something that I've done. I was going to make it a showcase piece, but I figured if somebody's going to hire a professional Hollywood developer, they're hard enough to find as it is. They'll know me. <laughs> and then for the Rapid GUI plugin, have you been involved in its development, or is that a, a different effort? Uh, no, that that was uh, Andreas Falkenhahn. The only it's uh, he leverages a lot of open source in Hollywood. So the Rapid GUI, uh, Rapid GUI, uh, these are examples, but he did all the examples. He did the plugin. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the the Amiga versions use MUI. The mm -hmm. Windows, Mac, and Linux versions I've got Linux up right now use uh, WX widgets, which is in turn a wrapper for their respective uh, operating system gadgets. And so only the the Android version has a, actually a specific uh, custom done graphical user interface. And it doesn't have every single gadget in it either. So it's it's kind of limited on the touch screen, I guess. But uh, yeah, I can't really put that up without switching Jitsi Meet over to my phone. Well, that's fine. And yeah. I, I don't know if I, I don't know if it'll screen share anyway. Yeah, let's not, let's not get that technical. Yeah, yeah, let's not get that technical. But you can Don't use Rapagui on on Android uh, to make a standalone Android uh, app that you could put on Google Play Store. You actually need to buy a separate um, a separate compiler component called. Uh, APK, I should be able to pull this up just to see. Yeah. Okay, here's the Hollywood website. And under purchase, there's a number of. Okay, it's APK compiler professional and home version. The home version shows a brag screen that says, hey, this was made in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. the, and the professional version has no brag screen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And has a few extra features to it. But uh, Andreas has done pretty well for himself just by covering all this territory, even yeah. leveraging all the open source that he's done. Yeah, yeah, this what is, an effort. Yeah, he has. Have you done much with the mobile one? Um, I haven't got the the um, APK developer because I didn't want to have that and then have nothing to put on it yet. All mm -hmm. of my code so far has just been utilities for using with Hollywood, so that doesn't really it's not really conducive to making a mobile app. Right, right. So. I haven't gotten that. Oh, and here's Remi Remedy OS or Mac OS. What was that again? I forget what that is. I better look that up. That could be important. Oh, I think I. Oh, I know what that is. That's the. That's just like the APK developer, but for iOS. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I remember reading That's that too. Remedi Remedi OS is yeah. This is the APK compiler information. It's got a few yeah. missing features in it on the home version. And then Remedi OS is for iOS. Catch is with with Remedi OS is that um, you're almost on your own when it comes to making a GUI. Because Rapid GUI can't generate the file that the operating system expects, and it's a closed file format. So From Apple, really? Ra <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you go to all the trouble of. 
But, I mean, you can do a lot of things with it other, otherwise, besides the gooey stuff. So yeah, how come uh, you didn't create that presentation in Hollywood? Because uh, Hollywood can only support one screen at a time. I had my uh, crib notes showing on my other screen while you were watching the slideshow. Ah, okay. So, and that's something that LibreOffice on my Linux machine does very easily. We've got, we've got another question rolling in here. Um, this one okay. sounds a little more nuanced, maybe. Um, okay. The, the, the viewer says, I checked the video player sample. Is it possible to use the VA library by AEON so GPU power can be used? A V, what library? VA library? Video acceleration library. Video acceleration. Okay. Oh, video acceleration. Uh, there are plugins that allow that. I'll pull it up on the download and you hear. The, there's two of them that will use the, graph, the graphical acceleration. Um, let's see, Rebel SDL, we'll use SDL 2.0, which is definitely graphically accelerated. And the other one, and that, that's only 2D, and then for 3D there's GL Galore. I think what they're talking about is the VA library for um, video, hardware accelerated video playback. Oh, no, not yet, unless the AV codec is, as FFmpeg is a wrapper for. But other than that, I, I don't think it actually shows hardware. Well, it might. It might actually. That that would, might be a built-in function of the respective platforms, though. I don't know if the, the code, okay, the, it depends on the codec. Let's put it that way. There are different codecs supported, various ones. Some of them are specific to the operating systems. Others are not. Most of the ones that aren't are not as accelerated as the ones that are. So that sounds like a definite maybe. Definite maybe. Depends <laughs> on what platform you're on. All right. But it does show video, so. Yes, yes. Some of these are open source, these plugins too. I didn't, forgot to mention that. They're written mostly in C, some of them in C. But, uh, are, there, are there any plugins? Oh, wait, I think I see it. SQLite 3. Yeah. The database. Oh, yes. Yep, data, database. And then somebody has written a, a, a hurl library that will access, that's written in Hollywood itself, that accesses. Uh, what's it called? SQL, not my SQL, it's the other one. Postgres? Postgres, post yeah. yeah. They made a Hollywood library using the Hurl plugin to access a Postgres SQL database over a network. I don't have, it's not, it's not an example code that comes with it, but uh, it was mentioned on the forum, somebody posted it to the forum. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, there are third-party libraries out there that someone can use, right? Except those that we can see in the Hollywood uh, website. Oh, there are uh, other plugins? No. There haven't been many other plugins made. I started making one and it was pretty difficult, I thought, because, well, I mean, it wasn't terribly difficult, it's just I had my code was full of bugs and I didn't feel like fixing it. I, I started making an encryption uh, file, file encryption plugin, and I didn't finish it ever. So, I mean, that some of these do have source code, so if you really wanted to, you could, and, there, and then uh, there is the public SDK for making plugins. Let's see, where would that be? That'd be under no, it's under download. Of 
Okay, the Hollywood SDK. Um, what? Where is it? Oh, here it is, down here. Hollywood SDK contains all the C includes required to make plugins. It's just Andreas has, made, has been so prolific with his that most people don't feel the need to do their own. Which is kind of sad, actually, but uh, if you do have some C code that you want to have accessible, you can always make a plugin out of it. And that's not, that's pretty straightforward if you just have the code already written. In fact, a lot of the plugins up here are just wrappers for C codes that already existed. Like the, okay, like the AHX player play, is a Hively tracker player code. You just wrapped it up in a plugin and it works. It's supported on all operating systems. And then your FFmpeg, an older version, he took it and wrapped it up in a plugin, and here it is, AV Codec. Also has the source code available. One thing that might be a problem, though, is that uh, C++ code that uses templates might be a problem because uh, it's hard to wrap a template. It's a, just a header. So some environments in C++ are hard to incorporate into Hollywood. But as long as it's written in C native, then it's plenty easy to imp incorporate. So is Rapa GUI like the, the, the go-to plugin for GUI? On, on multi-platform GUIs, yes. But there's also MUI Royale if you want a little bit more nuanced control for the Amiga legs only. Okay. It's been around longer, but it allows a little bit more control. And since it's MUI specific, I planted a bug in Andreas here. Maybe he can uh, add some more MUI specific features. I, I'm kind of holding out for the ability to embed uh, gadgets into wrapped text because I know MUI supports it. I looked it up on the documentation and emailed it to him. So uh, we'll see what he comes up with for MUI Royale 2.0. Thought it would be an interesting idea. No source code available here. Otherwise, I'd do it my own stinking self. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is that if you are going to use that, you will lose the uh, feature of uh, porting your application to other systems. Right, right. They're, they're not very compatible with each other, though they have similar mechanisms inside. Rapagui runs on all operating systems except iOS, while, yeah, my MUI Royale is Amiga specific. So we've got another high tech question from the YouTube chat. Okay. <clears throat> it says, can the HTTP streamer handle DLNA, so video audio content from DLNA capable devices like Kodi can be accessed? Ah. Uh. I think the LNA is a, it's a media a server call. system where you can have, uh, you know, a NAS or something right. like that with your, your media oh, files okay. on it. Yeah. And then you can play it with Kodi or VLC or whatever. Is the LNA a protocol? Or is I think it, it is. The LNA. Okay. A digital living network. And yeah, actually, oh, okay. actually it gives you XML. The LNA. Oh, uh, XML? Yeah, it retains XML. You can use these in conjunction with each other then. The HTTP streamer can stream video or any stream format, it can stream audio also. Yeah, but you have to parse the XML file the from codec, the stream. You need a different one. Like AV Codec has, uh, has uh, MP3 streaming, would need AV Codec. 
Or if you wanted to stream an AUG file, you could use the AUG Vorbis or AUG Video, AUG Fiora. You can use these together with each other, yes. Um, it just depends on what format you're streaming. Uh, some of the, for example, Amiga doesn't, I don't think has an H.264 uh, streaming format built in. But some of these other operating systems do. In fact, uh, you can see right here, you don't even need an Aug Orbis or Aug Fiora plugin for Android or iOS, because the mobile ones have that built into their version of the player. So, um, okay, like a Kodi cam, a web camera, I think depends entirely on what the operating system you're trying to stream to and what, and what format it uses. For the DLNA in question, the yeah. more, uh, let's say, difficult part is because it uses a SOAP protocol to change uh, information that you have to post uh, the request in an XML file and then it returns uh, an XML file and the, then you have to just pass it, get the URL that uh, you need and feed that, I expect, to the HTTP streamer and then this is going to work. That's yeah. what I expect. I think, I I think mm -hmm. okay, one thing else, I think the HTTP streamer version 1.1 added HTTPS uh, secure protocol to it. Mm -hmm. So th that will in turn require uh, the Amiga library for the ASSL. Yeah, yeah, it'll support that. If it has the library, it'll support it. If it doesn't have the library like AROS for a long time didn't, then it wouldn't be able to support it. And then a lot of MorphOS for a long time was using just open SSL in all of its applications individually, so Hollywood couldn't access it. But now there, I think, is a MorphOS version of AMI SSL now too, so it can. That should be on the AmiNet. So, yeah. I haven't used XML parser very much. It might, yeah, uh, it will definitely read an XML file into tables where you can edit it. I'm not sure if it will serialize it out to a hurl or a hurl or HTTP streamer or not. It, you might just have to make your own XML like what I've done in, in the uh, rapid edit. I just uh, had some recursive calls to generate the tags and then subtags and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, that, but XML being text-based is not a problem. Yeah, right. I guess the long and the short of it is your mileage may vary depending on how far you want to go and how much work you want to put into it. Yeah. But I, yeah. Yeah. So any more questions? Uh, well, I think that clears the YouTube queue. Okay. Anyone, anyone in the room? Have you heard anything about the web player so we can export uh, the application to on the web? On the browser? No. Or it, it, does, it, it does not compile to um, to JavaScript or um, WebAssembly yet. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's planned to. Okay. But there is, you can stream, I think you can export to Here, I don't have to guess, I can just pull it up. Create video. 
you can make you can make an ABI file out of an animation. Ah, okay, yeah. And that will be that will work. Yeah, I think is, there is uh, some that, that option is also in uh, designer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's it, the the it's it, the foundation is in Hollywood, and anything Hollywood can do, designer can access. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of how much you want to add scripts to it. Yeah. There, it, so you you have to be fluent in Hollywood to use the full capabilities of Hollywood, but. You can get the results a little quicker through Hollywood Designer sometimes if you don't have to do everything yourself. Yeah. Last 2020, I made a slideshow in Hollywood and added at End West. Oops, it's on the wrong screen. <laughs> presentation that's updated for 2022 do you? I do not. There hasn't been much happening with it. I figured. I was just hoping. Uh, Erix. Uh, Michael Schultz has been focusing most of his efforts for the Amiga scene on uh, his uh, little JIT for the ARM Processor to run 68K code. Well, that makes more sense. Yeah. Emu 68, it's called. It requires a 64 bit arm, but it runs really fast. Cool. So he hasn't actually done much with ARIX lately, but he will. And he's not the only one working on a similar type of. Uh, there's a similar Deadwood. Another AROS developer has been working on another uh, Linux hybrid solution for AROS developers and stuff to team up on. I, I don't know why he and uh, Michael Schultz didn't team up. But anyway, there's a, AROS has a lot of stuff going on, but it seems to be splitting off into a dozen different directions, unfortunately. Yeah. So, let's see. And I probably better not show these because uh, don't they don't all run in a window, so they might pop up on the wrong screen. I suppose I could just uh, set Jitsi Me to look at the other screen. Oh well. It's getting late. We, <laughs> any other questions? Oh, I think we're good. Are you? Yep. Oh.
Thanks, Sam. This is a great, great presentation. I've been looking forward to seeing right. Hollywood for a while. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yay. All right. All right. Well, I guess uh, we'll see you on the stream tomorrow, Sam.